All right, so I just came across this video by Flying Wild Arizona, um, and I just want to give a shout out to him real quick. I'll put his link to his video um, below to credit him for this, but it uh, the title is Power On Stall Develops Into a Spin. Let me tell you, this is like every brand new CFI's worst nightmare. Not because we're not able to recover from it, we've done straight, um, spin training, but because it's actually pretty terrifying the first time a student spins you. Let me just tell you this right now, like as a CFI, as a new CFI, we never wanted to get to this point <laughs> because I've noticed that like more experienced instructors are willing to let this happen, but I don't want it to happen for a couple of reasons. One, it's incredibly uncomfortable. Two, it scares the crap out of me. And then third is that it scares the student. And I don't want my, I, I get it, like you can use it as a wake up call to a student and that's pretty fine. But there's a thing in the back of my head that's like, I don't want to scare my students so bad that they never want to fly again. So what I do is that before getting to the point to where they spin it like this, I'll just tell them to recover. I'm like, do it again, do it again. I, uh, a, a week ago, I was with the student and the student almost put me in a spin twice. And then at one point I let the wing dip before covering so that the student could feel how bad that feels. Cause I needed to like give this person a jolt, but to develop, let it develop into a full spin, I don't have the gall to do that yet. Maybe one day I'll change my mind. But uh, anyway, so power on stall develops into a spin. Let's go ahead and watch this video. <laughs> the CFI's laughing. This guy's got some experience. I'll tell you what, because your your average CFI is not gonna la laugh at that. So this guy's like probably a career CFI. That student's taking it pretty well, to be honest. Considering he just accidentally spun a plane. I mean, bro is stone cold right here. Look at that. Just predator eyes. Just just ready to devour that horizon and just spin the hell out of that thing. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so. All right, let's go. Let's break this down piece by piece because we want to turn this turn this into a le learning moment. And so does the person who posted this because they put in a really good description, which we'll read. But um, first thing that I'm just noticing going into this is um, his eyes. So I always look at where my students' eyes are, and I'm like, "What are you looking at? Are you looking at the attitude indicator? Are you looking at the VSI?" So I'm looking at his eyes. It looks like he's looking at the RPMs right now, which is good. Adds in that full power. It sounds like he's actually doing full and not simulated full. Pitching nose up, he is already aggravating this yoke. Okay, so this to me as a flight instructor is a red flag when a student starts wobbling like this. It's not the end of the world, but if you're uncoordinated, meaning that the ball is out of that little cage right there on the turn coordinator, it's it's a recipe for a spin, right? So look at him. He's already shaking. This is telling me that you're like about to spin this thing, okay? Um, his eyes are out on the horizon. That's fine. This is a VFR maneuver. You're supposed to be looking outside. However, um, I do encourage my students to at least glance at the attitude indicator, okay, and to make sure that your wings level. Um, like I said, don't become so obsessed with the attitude indicator and that you're staring at it the whole time, but incorporate that into your scan, okay? It's going to make your power installs really smooth. Boom, right here, he is go-kart mode. Uh, his brain is telling you, he starts to wake up here. So this is the funny thing about the human brain. He wants to go right, but he goes into like Mario Kart mode. And, um, and uh, sorry, my uh, instructor just texted me. He dips it to the, because he wants to go that way. This is called, oh, what is it called? Um, negative transfer of learning. Okay, this is something we learn in fundamentals of instruction. And this instructor probably saw this coming from a mile away, okay? So he's still looking out the window. He, he's like, I'm going over here. Um, aggravates the aileron, just full-on deflects. Who knows what that rudder's doing? Probably left rudder. And then the instructor here says, all right, now we're in a spin. Man, that guy's got some cojones, because I swear if that ever happened to me, I would not, I would not be like, all right. Now we're in a spin. We're going to let this kind of uh, escalate a little bit. And then the instructor um, probably tells the student to take his hands off at this point. 
and beautiful recovery, smooth recovery. He's smiling because he's he's living to see another day, right? Full power in there. So yeah, guys, this is why we go into our maneuvers coordinated, okay? Um, I'm not saying this is like, this is actually a really good learning experience. I'm not even gonna sit here and like crap on the student because he's just, a, this is part of the learning experience, right? These are one of the scarier moments in your um, training that hopefully you never encounter. But also this is like a blessing in disguise because I guarantee you this guy's never gonna do that again. Well, never say never, but he learned a valuable lesson from this and he got some free spin training out of it. So um, let's go ahead and read this description real quick too to give you guys some context and then we'll end the video here. On December 18th, Tombstone, Arizona, this was a practice power on stall with a student in a Cessna 172, 180 horsepower. Notice the aircraft is yawing left due to an aggressive right rudder. Oh, okay, so he had aggressive right rudder in there. So he was right rudder. Oh, wow, he had too much right rudder? Notice the aircraft is long. He's yawing left due to, oh, sorry, due to the lack of right. I was going to say, no student in the world is putting in too much right rudder. I will tell you that right now. When the left wing drops, the student attempted recovery by lifting the down wing with aileron, a very natural yet incorrect response. Response, Okay, so that's the negative transfer of learning that I was telling you about. This only aggravates the stall by further increasing the wing's angle attack, attack and more deeply stalling the wing. And the development of a spin begins as we go vertical. The correct response is to, is to the correct response to a wing drop is quick and pronounced opposite rudder. In 15 seconds, we went to 7,600 feet MSL down to 6,600 before recovering. The descent was 4,000 feet per minute. We leveled off at 2,100 feet AGL. So this is why we also, like, I um, I do not do uh, power on stalls without a sufficient amount of altitude. I want at least 3,000 feet AGL. Um, at least 3,000 feet AGL. Okay? And we only had an additional 30 sec seconds before impact. The student goes hand off, hands off as well as I, we were able to recover after only half a turn, the incipient phase. Okay, so remember there's different phases of a spin, which you should know. The, so the spin never fully developed. Okay, so this was never a fully developed spin. Had it continued, it would have developed. So that last video that I did, um, go back and watch that one. That one is a full on spin. That one is like, that dude is spinning into another dimension. Bro is a vortex. While pointed in the vertical directly at the ground, I will tell you, I had to mentally force myself to release the back pressure of the yoke. So this is a huge, huge thing. When you are doing spin training, every instinct, every bone in your body, your monkey brain, your lizard brain, that part of you that wants to like survive, wants to pull back on that yoke. And what is your often your natural instinct in aviation is not always the correct answer as we've seen in this. So even the instructor it catches him off guard, he says. And even he wanted to, um, you know, he, he wanted to apply back pressure. But you have to stop, okay? Because if you go to the PAIR acronym, right? PAIR acronym aviation. If you go to the PAIR acronym, it says close the throttle, neutralize the ailerons, okay? Full deflection in the direction opposite of the spin and stick forward to uninstall the, the wing. Okay, well elevators this isn't like the best um just ignore that there's actually better ones than this this is why you got to be careful with google sometimes there we go this is a lot better okay so spin recovery power close out throttle okay got it um ailerons neutral rudder in the opposite direction elevator move column progressively and centrally until spin stops and then rudder neutral ease out of ensuing, ensuing that. God, English is hard. English is my first language and I'm struggling in this right now. Um, but anyways, he says, he goes on to say, as soon as I applied opposite rudder, the opposite direction of the spin, it stopped, okay? This is often what all you really need is just pull that power out, hands off rudder in the opposite direction and the, the plane will recover itself, okay? Not all the time, but I've noticed that in like most Cessnas, like they will see, they seem to recover themselves. It was intense experience where I was training. Um, it was an intense experience where training I received over a year ago suddenly kicked in. Okay, so that muscle memory is there. I'm very thankful to my CFI spin instructor and airshow pilot, Marcus Payne, rest in peace, 
and the great aerobatic instructors. Okay, so this guy said <laughs> for preparing me for a situation that he said I that would eventually happen. And it most definitely does as a CFI. Like you get really close to this, if not fully. Like I've said, I've never had a fully a student fully develop a spin, but I've had it get close. Okay. A pilot who wants to train out the natural response to lift a wing with ALM should practice the falling leaf exercise with a CFI. Ooh, that's a good one. The falling leaf exercise. You guys should look into that. I've actually, I think I've done this once before. I think that's when you um, just apply full back pressure and you just stall the plane over and over again. And you're maintaining that wings level in the spin, or sorry, in the um, stall. Uh, I think I've actually done this in a power off configuration, if I remember correctly, but... Anyways, guys, yeah, this was a really good video. I actually really enjoyed this, and props to Flying Wild Arizona. This was like a really great breakdown, too, and uh, you don't really get footage like this, um, surprisingly. So, all right, guys, I'll see you.